I remember arriving in London and I was like, wow, I am really here all by myself. Like, it's different when you have to get all your luggage by yourself, even like I'm usually used to having like my parents help or friends help. But I had to like get all my bags and it was like it was just like, I don't know, I just had this moment of realization like, wow, you're really about to do this by yourself. Hey everyone, welcome to Flourish in the Foreign, a podcast that celebrates, elevates, and affirms the voices and stories of Black women living and thriving abroad while exploring living abroad as a pathway to wellness. I'm your host, Christine Job, a Black American business strategist and podcaster based in Barcelona. I went from burnt out in the States to thriving abroad, and I want you to do so as well. As a business strategist, I help Black women and women of color leverage their talents and their expertise into viable and sustainable online businesses, businesses that make them professionally fulfilled and financially abundant. I help my incredibly ambitious and competent and brilliant clients utilize their magic in the pursuit of their own dreams. I take my clients through my signature 12-week sprint in which we go from ideation to purpose-driven business and sales. If you are interested in building a business abroad and taking your talents and your expertise and really utilizing them in the pursuit of your own dreams, in the pursuit of your own life vision, get at me. Go to the website www.flourishintheforeign.com slash resources and get my free build a business abroad guide and then go ahead and check out all the many ways that we can work together from helping you with moving abroad questions to helping you launch the business of your dreams. You can find out all of that information at www.flourishintheforeign.com. Flourish in the Foreign is a labor of love, but y'all know it. It's labor, nonetheless. And that is why I ask all of you to please support this beautiful Black woman podcast. You can support Flourish in the Foreign by becoming a Patreon member at www.patreon.com slash flourish foreign where I have an amazing library of articles all about moving abroad, thriving abroad from all around the world. So check that out and other resources exclusively for our Patreons. You can buy me a coffee at www.buymeacoffee.com slash flourish foreign. You can cash out the podcast at dollar sign flourish foreign. You can purchase a piece of sorely needed podcast production equipment via our Amazon wish list, which you can find at www.flourishintheforeign.com slash support. And as always, make sure that you rate and review this podcast. It is so important and share it amongst all of your friends and your family and on social media. Tag Flourish in the Foreign at Flourish Foreign and I'll be sure to repost. I'm looking forward to being a panelist for the Digital Nomads Beyond 50 Summit this June 22nd through the 24th. There will be over 20 panelists covering over 25 topics. It is a live virtual event of information and inspiration for those in their late 40s and beyond. For those who have a location-independent life, who plan to or are just curious, you're definitely ready for this. So register now because early adopters get $10 off and 10% of the profits are going to be donated to CharityWater.org. 
Grab your ticket via my affiliate link at no extra charge to you, but it does support this here podcast. You can grab that in the description of this episode, on the show notes page of this episode, and on the resource page of Flourish in the Foreign at www.flourishintheforeign.com slash resources. All right, on to the next episode. So today's guest is Paige, and Paige is a wildly popular YouTube star based in London, and I really enjoyed speaking to her about her journey to being abroad, being a successful content creator. We had a great conversation that I know you all will enjoy, but I'm going to let her tell you all about it. My name is Paige Mariah. I am 28 years old and I'm currently living in London, England. My hometown is Chicago, Illinois, and I was 26 when I left. So when I was younger, my mom always like encouraged traveling, but it was more so within the United States. She wanted us to see as many of the states as we could. And international travel really wasn't a big thing for us until Around 2016, my brother really wanted, my younger brother, he really wanted to visit London and Paris. And I also did as well, but he was one who really, really started to beg my parents and they allowed us to um, book that trip because before then we had only been to like a few different islands and things like that. But we made our trip to London and Paris in 2016. And I think it just like really set off a light bulb in my head that I wanted to be in London specifically. I asked Paige to tell me about her university experience and if she had the opportunity to study abroad. So I attended Hampton University. I graduated in 2014. I could have had the opportunity to study abroad, but it was actually something that I didn't end up doing. For some reason, I just had this idea in my head that I would be missing out. I would be you know, left out from whatever my friends were doing at university. And I just chose not to do study abroad. And it's something that I've always kind of regretted. But then I realized that I could actually still study abroad for my master's degree, which I feel like so many people don't really think about. It's just, it's never too late, even if you miss that opportunity while you're an undergrad. So after I graduated in 2014, I did an internship at a communications agency. I graduated with a degree in uh, public relations and my minor was marketing. So after I did the internship, I tried to apply for full-time work and I was having a really hard time finding something that was a good fit. But then I finally was offered a job position for a marketing coordinator role at a non-for-profit in downtown Chicago. And I actually stayed there for over four and a half years and I resigned to actually move to London. I wanted to know what made her want to move to London, what was going on in her life. And so I asked her to describe to me her journey abroad. So I had actually started thinking about possibly going to grad school in London two years before I really went through with it. But I remember I started looking it up and then I just felt like, no, this is too unrealistic. I can't drop everything. I can't move abroad. It's too late for me. And I don't I don't know why I thought that way, but I did. But then, like I said, two years later, I was actually in a relationship with someone who was about to move abroad to West Africa. And it kind of lit this fire under me because I was very unfulfilled and unhappy at my job. I think I had just stayed a little bit too long. And that was really my main source of happiness at the time, my relationship. So seeing that I was about to lose that as well, it just kind of made me say to myself, okay, Paige, what are you going to do for yourself now? Like, what are you going to do to make yourself happy? Are you going to, you know, go out for your, go after your dreams? Or are you going to continue to sit here and be stagnant? So that's when I started looking up grad programs in London once again. And this time I actually went through with it and applied and everything just started happening so quickly. And before I knew it, I was here. Going to school is a great way to go abroad. So I asked Paige to walk me through what her graduate school application process was like. I remember the application process just being super simple. 
I basically just went on my university's website and they had the application form right on there. I had to submit like two recommendation letters, uh, one professional and one academic. I had to do a personal statement just explaining why I wanted to attend that university and And then I had to submit my transcripts and that was pretty much it. It was a really straightforward and easy process. I asked Paige to tell me about what it was like that day that she left Chicago for London. What was going on in her mind? What was happening on the ground? And also tell me what it was like when she finally landed in London. Not for a visit, but to live and to go to school. So I can still remember the day that I left Chicago and I actually blogged it on my YouTube channel so I can go back and look at it whenever I want to. But it was just a very, I would say it was a little bit emotional, but I was more so excited than nervous. I can definitely say that. I felt hopeful. I was really just excited for the future and I felt like things were really about to start changing for me. I could just feel it. And yeah, it was just, it was a great day. My parents, you know, teared up a little bit, but I was really happy. And I I remember waving bye and I went and embarked on the journey of a lifetime. And then I remember arriving in London and I was like, wow, I am really here all by myself. Like it's different when you have to get all your luggage by yourself, even like I'm usually used to having like my parents help or friends help but I had to like get all my bags and it was like it was just like I don't know I just had this moment of realization like wow you're really about to do this by yourself. I asked Paige to tell me more about her graduate program and what it was like attending university in London. So I attended the University of Greenwich and I studied strategic marketing. I loved my program. I had such an amazing experience. My university has a really large international student population. So I was one of two Americans. There was only one student from the UK. Everyone else was from all over the world. It was such a melting pot. And the lecturers were great. They had, you know, office hours always available for us. And they were always willing to help. It was a big transition for me, though, because I hadn't studied in, you know, several years, over four and a half years. So When I came here, it was a little bit of a struggle getting back into the swing of things and writing research reports and having deadlines, you know, that way. I've never studied for a master's degree before in the United States, so I'm not sure if this is like like widely different or extremely different from the States, but it was a very independent learning structure. So we had no homework assignments, no tests. We were just expected to come to our course, listen to the lecture, and go home and do our own reading, our own studying. And then at the end of the course, we were to submit a final report. And that was our grade for the entire course, which I didn't really like too much because I felt like, I don't know, I mean, in my experience in undergrad, I liked having multiple assignments because you might do better on one assignment than you do on the other, but it balances your grade out a bit. But here we only had like one shot to get it right. And that was it, which I found to be challenging when I first started. But I definitely utilized like the office hours, like I said, and just trying to get as much help as I could because it had been so long since I wrote in an academic way like that. So once I got it together, it was fine. But yeah, at the beginning, it was a little bit challenging for me, I must say. I feel like I adjusted pretty well and I ended up graduating with merit, so that was pretty um, exciting. First year abroad or in a new city is very different from your third or fifth or obviously your 10th year. And so I asked her what that first year was like for her in London. My first year in London was an interesting one. Honestly, I think I kind of had this idea when I first got here that I was just going to leave, you know, all my problems behind, all my worries behind Chicago, and I was just going to start this brand new life in London, and it was just going to be perfect and amazing. And I think a lot of people might also have that perception when they are moving abroad, because you are essentially starting over from scratch. But I realized quickly that wherever you go, you bring yourself with you. So I had a little bit of trouble the first year, just like, I don't know, I, I think moving abroad you have to spend a lot of time alone for most people. And I think I wasn't so used to that and having to be alone so often and in my thoughts and just thinking about, you know, my life, my future. 
I went through a lot of, you know, stress and I feel like, I don't know, I, it was like a big year of growth for me. You know, I had like my highs and my lows because of course I was excited to be here, but I also had to do a lot of self-reflection, a lot of self-work the first year, but I don't regret a thing. I needed that first year and now it's it's made for an even better second year, I'd say. So Paige finished her graduate program and she decided that she still wanted to stay in London. So I asked her to walk me through what it was like to switch visas in order for her to stay. When I decided that I wanted to stay in London, I was trying to figure out, you know, how I was going to go about that. And I learned about the UK startup visa, which basically allows you to stay in London two years after you complete your program at your university to work on an original business idea. So I reached out to my university and I asked, you know, for more information about this process. And they strongly encouraged me to take part of this thing called the Enterprise Challenge, which is basically like an entrepreneurship challenge. So I had to come up with an original business idea, which was my idea was something that was always kind of sitting in the back of my head. But this kind of like propelled me forward and made me actually act on it. So I went through through the whole challenge, made it to the semifinals, and then I ended up applying for the UK startup visa. I had built a relationship, you know, with my university. They knew my idea. They knew how passionate I was about it. COVID actually changed the way that the applic application process worked, though, because you were supposed to, like, do an in-person pitch of your business and then do, like, a speed fire round type of question interview thing. So that completely changed. and I ended up having to create a video which is probably to my advantage because that is what I do. If I know how to do anything, it's create a video. So I had to make a video pitching my business and then I had like a Zoom interview and they were supposed to let me know within a week if I was going to receive the endorsement from my university and they let me know the same day. So that was probably the best day of this year for me. And I found out that I was going to be able to stay here and work on my business um, idea, which I'll be sharing in the next few months. I'm always curious about family reactions to a decision to move abroad. And so I asked Paige, what was her family's response to her not only moving abroad for grad school, but also wanting to stay? I think they probably saw it coming. <laughs> my family knew how much I loved it here. And I just, I mean, I already talked to my mom pretty much every, well, I do talk to her every single day, multiple times a day, sometimes on FaceTime. So she knew how I was feeling. And I was just expressing to her that I felt like my time in London wasn't done yet. So she understood that. She's definitely hoping that I will return after these two years, though, and not try to extend it any longer. But they're super supportive. They're super happy for me. They know that this is where I want and need to be right now to move forward in my career. So yeah, they're super supportive. They get it. I asked Paige, describe to me what has been her experience as a Black American woman in London? So it's interesting. I love sharing this with people because it was definitely a new experience with a new experience for me. But basically, when I first arrived here, I had a lot of people who would just ask me, like, where are you from? Where's your family from? And I would always just say Chicago. And they're like, no, no, where's your family from? And then I came to realize that they were asking about my heritage, like where in Africa, where in the Caribbean are my family from? And I didn't know the answer to that question. So I would say like the first few weeks I was here, I was having a bit of an identity crisis. Like, well, who am I? Where am I from? But I got over that fairly quickly and just talking to other Americans who are abroad in London as well. And we just realized, you know, Americans, we, we've created our own culture, which is respected and like, I don't know, like looked up to all over the world. People always embracing our culture, so no matter where you are in the world. So I think it just, it, it's been an interesting experience, like just from that aspect, but otherwise it's been pretty good. I asked Paige to describe to me the Black community in London. Of course, there's a very big, diverse Black community. You have people from all over, different parts of Africa, different parts of the Caribbean. I've tried my best, you know, connect with, so many different types of people and it has been a little bit more challenging finding like black British friends I would say though because I feel like a lot of people here that have been here all their life like they kind of already have their friend groups 
So it's been a little bit easier for me to connect with people who also came from abroad. But recently, I actually started participating in a group called the Black British Travel Meetup, where Black British people come together who enjoy traveling and they do like different outings and things like that. So I went on a day trip recently and I've now made like so many new Black British friends, which is something that I have been wanting to experience since I moved here. So that has just been amazing because we're we're not as different as you know we may seem we're from different you know countries different walks of life but we have so many similarities as well I wouldn't say that I had a huge culture shock when I came here because I feel like there are a lot of similarities but definitely when it comes to slang I have to say that it could be very different from what we're used to in America and just some of the phrases and words they use. Like I felt like I needed a translator sometimes, but the British friends that I've made here have definitely been great as been great at um, letting me know what certain words mean and translating for me. But other than that, it really, it hasn't been too much of a shock. Like you can find a lot of things here that are in the States and vice versa. So it hasn't been bad at all. Dating. The question y'all love to ask. So I asked Paige to tell me about the London dating scene. So like I mentioned before, the first year that I was here, I just did a lot of self-reflection and working on myself. So I actually took a hiatus for an entire year from dating. And that was very intentional. And it was the first time I had ever done something like that. So I didn't date for a while. But then since like the the lockdown restrictions have let up a bit and we're able to meet with people outside and things like that I have started dating in London (laughs) and it has been a very very interesting experience I wouldn't say it's too much of a difference like the guys are not too different from American guys other than the fact that I would say British men are probably a little bit more reserved but it hasn't been too different it's been fun though and just like getting to meet different people and the guys are always so intrigued like oh my gosh you're an American you know like I can't wait to hear your accent this is if you're meeting them on a a dating app of course I can't wait to hear your accent things like that but like a really fun time over these last few months dating again and just seeing what's out there I guess I'm always curious to discuss with my guests whether the politics of their home country still affect them while they're abroad Since Paige is American, I asked her if U.S. politics still affect her even though she lives in London. I would definitely say so because even though I'm here, my family and my friends are in the United States and that's never going to change. So when there were, you know, all of the things going on with Black Lives Matter, like I felt so like deeply affected because... You know, I have my family, like I said, my family, my friends back in the States. And at some points, I almost felt guilty for being over here where I don't really have those same fears anymore that I did, you know, in the States. But I just tried to, you know, show my support and do as much as I could and, you know, attended protests and things here in England because I just, yeah, everything that's going on at home, it will always affect me because my people are there. I hope you're enjoying this episode of Flourish in the Foreign. And if you are, be sure to take a screenshot and tag at Flourish Foreign across your social media and share it with the world. Let everyone know that you are listening. I really appreciate all of your continued support of the podcast. Please consider supporting the podcast via Patreon at www.patreon.com slash Flourish Foreign via Buy Me A Coffee at www.buymeacoffee.com slash Flourish Foreign via Cash App at dollar sign Flourish Foreign or purchase a piece of production equipment via our Amazon wish list at www.flourishintheforeign.com slash support. Any amount is greatly, greatly appreciated. To learn more about this episode's guests, be sure to check out their show notes at www.flourishintheforeign.com slash episodes. And if you are looking for resources to help you get, stay, and thrive abroad, be sure to check out the Flourish in the Foreign resource page at www.flourishintheforeign.com slash resources. All right, let's continue the show.
So there might be some of you all listening that don't really know a lot about the rental or real estate market in London, but let me tell you, it is hot, hot, hot and very expensive. I asked Paige to tell me about her experience finding a flat in London. This is another experience that I vlogged on my channel because it was such an interesting one. I actually viewed 14 flats before I chose the one that I'm in now. It was tough. It was a really tough experience because, I mean, you could go to a flat and it looked nice on the pictures online and you get there and you're like, this is not what I expected at all. Or you might get there and meet the people that you're going to be living with and you're like, I don't know that this is going to be a good fit. So I use the website called Spare Room, and then I use a Facebook group, which is specifically for people of color who are searching for housing in London. So I use both of those um, at the same time, and then I ended up finding the flat that I'm currently living in on the Facebook group. My flatmate made a post saying that she was looking for a girl to move in, and I responded to it, and here we are. She was. This was the last flat that I viewed, and I was just Really, really hoping that she offered it to me because when we met, we hit it off so well and I felt like this was the perfect place for me. I've been here about a year now and I don't plan on going anywhere. We just signed another lease. I love it here. My flatmate is not only my flatmate and my landlord, but she's my friend. So it's been a really, really great experience. And I don't regret viewing 14 flats because it just took that many times to get the right one. I asked Paige about her impressions of the healthcare system in the UK and any experiences she may have had with the healthcare system. As a student, you get access to NHS. You have to pay the like healthcare surcharge and then it just becomes available to you. I think it's a really great system. Like you don't have to pay a copay when you want to go see the doctor. You do have to pay for dental services, but everything else is pretty much included in that fee that I paid. Um, when I was a student. And now that I'm on this new visa, I also had to pay a healthcare surcharge and opted into NHS. So yes, yeah, everything is pretty much covered. It's, it's really great. I've actually gone in for like a routine checkup. I had like my annual pap smear, things like that. And I also had to get an emergency dentist appointment as well. So yeah, I've, I've been to the doctor and the dentist a few times. I know some people have their complaints uh, when it comes to like NHS versus like private healthcare. But I mean, I've only experienced the NHS here and I haven't had any problems with it. It's, they seem to be, you know, really about their business to me here. So I haven't had any issues. COVID-19, goodness. I think we're probably all tired of hearing about it, but it has changed our world forever. And so I asked Paige, what was her impression of the UK's response to the global pandemic? I honestly just can't believe that this happened while I was here in London. Like I never could have imagined, but yeah, I just remember like at the beginning, I was just in this state of denial. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure I'll still be able to go on my, you know, Europe trips that I have planned for May and You know, before you knew it, my birthday had passed just at the end of May and then June. And I'm just like, wow, this is this is still happening. Everything that was happening in the States, like people buying up all the toilet paper and all the food that happened here as well. It was really just like crazy. But I think, yeah, it's just it's definitely gave me a a new appreciation for just being able to go out and do what you want to do freely, because this has been a really, really different type of experience. I feel like people have a lot of different opinions on like they'll say the UK did so much better than the States, you know, and things like that. But it seemed like we went on lockdown a little bit later than most places. I don't know how I feel about that, but I don't know if they, if they did a good job. I think everyone, like all governments are kind of just trying to figure this out as we go along. Like we don't really know like the best thing to do because this is something that's never happened before. So I think they're doing their best to figure it out. I don't think anybody really knows what's best. Living in Europe has a lot of pros and cons. I think for sure one of the biggest benefits of living in Europe is being so close to other countries and the airfare being so economical. I asked Paige if she has had the opportunity to travel through Europe and what that has been like for her, and if she has some other favorite cities in Europe. That's actually one of my favorite parts about living abroad um, here in London. 
So I made it a goal for myself in 2019 to visit 15 countries. And I was able to do that. I went on like a tour group situation that took us to eight different countries. So that helped me get through a lot of them very quickly. And then the other ones, I just went on trips with friends that I met here. My family members came over a few times and we would go on trips together in Europe. So I traveled a lot. I, traveling is probably my favorite hobby. So I'm actually really glad that I saw so many places in 2019 because I had no idea, you know, this pandemic was coming. But it makes me feel a little bit better because I was able to do so much before it happened. I would say that Lisbon, Portugal was one of my favorites because I had been to so many other European countries at that point before I went to Lisbon. And it just finally felt like it was a different vibe because they can all start running together and blurring a little bit because a lot of the buildings are the same color and you know things like that and I felt like Lisbon just had its own like flavor it's more like southern Europe and it just like felt like a totally different vibe and I loved it there and I really want to go back and go to other parts of Portugal and then I also surprisingly really loved Athens Greece I don't know it was just something about the city feel like I just really 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 loved my time there. And then another one I would say that is really surprising um, was Dublin, Ireland. Like I had no expectations for that trip. It was a quick weekend trip and I had such a blast there. So I've had a lot of um, trips where I didn't know what to expect because I really didn't know too much about the country before I went. And then I got there and just completely fell in love. As I told y'all before, Paige is an incredibly popular YouTuber and influencer, and so I asked her to tell me about her YouTube journey. So I have been creating content for years and years now. It started with me um, applying to be a part of the Freshman 15 for Seventeen Magazine when I was entering my freshman year at Hampton University, and I got chosen like out of over 3,000 girls to vlog and blog about my experience there. And I kind of just continued to do that all throughout university and after graduation. And then I really got into the YouTube thing, I would say around 2015, I started taking it more seriously. But at that point, there weren't really many people watching my videos. I might've had like less than a hundred subscribers, but then I started making videos um, in 2017 about my weight loss and fitness journey which kind of made my channel blow up. And I had no idea that that was going to happen, but it was like the coolest thing ever. My channel started to really pick up and really grow, you know, just because I think I was sharing like relatable content and helpful content. So then when I decided that I was going to be moving to London, I was really nervous because I knew that I wanted to document the experience, but I didn't know how my current subscribers were going to adapt or if they were going to want to continue to watch my videos. So I made the you know video saying that I was moving to London and they had the best response ever. They said they were going to, of course, tune in and they couldn't wait to see what I did, you know, when I moved abroad. And then coming over here, it was like, I don't know, like it really exploded once I got here as well, because a lot of people were just interested in my journey. So my channel like doubled within the first year, like with subscribers. And now I have so many UK subscribers who are interested in just watching an American live their life here and just seeing their experience through their eyes. So yeah, it's just, it's just, keep, it keeps growing every year. And it's really, really exciting because it just started as this small hobby and now it's something that I'm doing like full time so it's really it's amazing it's a dream come true honestly I also wanted to know what Paige's experience has been like being a black content creator I definitely think it could be more challenging as a black woman content creator to definitely get the like collaborations that we deserve and especially getting the payment that we deserve so I mean, I've just always tried to speak up for myself and vouch for, vouch for myself to, you know, show these brands that I am valuable and, you know, you're coming to me and you want me to, you know, promote your brand to my audience. So you need to, you know, recognize that I have something of value and pay me, you know, fairly. Along with that, it's just like interesting being on YouTube, you know, as a black woman and some of the comments you receive, I made a video actually about Black Lives Matter and it was just so crazy to see some of the comments that I was receiving because YouTube is a, is a strange place where 
most people are like faceless and they don't have a, a photo. So the comments have a lot of trolls and things like that. So there's been some challenges that have come along with it, but I mean, I'll, I'll never stop doing it though. <laughs> I know I'm helping way more people. I asked Paige if she had any advice for any of you who are aspiring content creators. My advice to anyone that wants to get started on YouTube is to just start because I feel like that is what's holding everyone back. Like they never actually even create the channel or get started with the process because they're too in their head. They're overthinking it. You just literally need to start. And don't worry so much about having the perfect equipment and, you know, things like that. Like, just start making your videos. Like, you will get better as time goes on. If your editing is not perfect, you know, when you first start, you're going to get better because practice makes perfect. So people just need to start. And I would say if you want people to really, like, engage and enjoy your content, you should just be authentic. You should be, you know, real and relatable. And I think that's what's helped my channel to do well is because I, I've never like sugarcoated anything. I've never put on um, any type of mask. Like I'm completely myself when I'm on my channel. So, and I think a lot of people can see that and people will see that when you make your videos, if you're not being authentic. So I would say that's important. Paige wanted to share some advice for some of you that are just thinking about going abroad. And this is what she said. Someone who had talked myself out of doing this years prior, I would say, please don't talk yourself out of it anymore. Like this is the best experience that like I've ever had in my life. Probably one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. It, it was of course a transition. Of course I had uncomfortable moments. Of course I had times where I was lonely and I was homesick and I was stressed, but I wouldn't trade this experience for the world. Like it has been just I mean, it, it, it hasn't just been, you know, me getting a degree that that's a wonderful part of it. But like, I've gained so much like internally, like I think I have just grown to be a new person, a person that I really am really, really proud of. So I would say if you're feeling nervous about it, that's normal, but you should still go through with it. You should do it because you will not regret it. And I asked Paige specifically for some advice for all of you who are interested in moving to London specifically. I would definitely say plan ahead. One of my biggest tips is to start saving. The, the moment you get the idea in your head that you want to come to London, I would start saving your money up because like I said, it's a major city. So it can be a little bit on the expensive side. So save up as much as you can. Let's see. Once you get here, one of my mistakes that I mentioned in my video was unintentionally only making friends with people who were like from abroad as well, other expats. I would definitely encourage to do like what I'm doing now, get involved with like groups, you know, with British people so that you can make friends who are from here. And I feel like it gives you, it makes your experience even better, like meeting people who were born and raised here. Just try to enjoy every moment. Like, you know, most people who come and live abroad, it's it's not forever. Like sometimes you're just here on a temporary visa. So try not to be in your head so much. Try to just enjoy your time because it goes by so, so fast. I didn't know if I was going to be able to stay in London you know, for another two years. So I really tried to live that first year because I don't know if I said my master's program was only one year long and then you got four months to figure out what you wanted to do after that. So I just tried to really embrace the time that I had here because I didn't know how much time I really did have. I asked Paige to describe to me her definition of wellness and how had living abroad really influenced that definition and practice of wellness for her. I definitely see it as like an emotional and mental thing when it comes uh, to wellness for me. Like if I'm just feeling like I'm in a good place, my whole life is just more in order. Like it, it all starts with like my mental and my emotional state. And like I said, my first year here was pretty rough and I try to do a lot of different activities to have better better wellness. I started listening to like motivational audiobooks, motivational YouTube videos. I started taking more walks and being more active and just trying to do things that will put me in a better headspace because I know that that affects everything else that I have going on in my life. So yeah, wellness is very, very, very important to me. Like 
not yeah not just emotionally and mentally but like my physical health and eating well and exercising all of that is so important especially when you're living abroad by yourself like your mental health like you want to absolutely keep that in check i think what this past year has taught us is that nothing is for certain and anything can change at the drop of a dime even so I still asked Paige where she saw herself in the foreseeable future. So that's definitely a difficult question for me to answer right now because I honestly don't know. So before I even came to London, I was the type of person who had to have like every little detail of her life planned out. Like I needed to know what was going to be happening, you know, you know, in the next five years, all of that. I tried to plan it out as best as I could. But I soon learned that you can't plan for everything. Like you'd never know what's going to happen. And Sometimes things change, the way you feel changes. So I don't really want to say right now what I'm going to be doing in the next two years because I might change my mind tomorrow. We have no, (laughs) we really don't know. So as of right now, I'm enjoying being in London. Will I stay? Will I go back to the States after I'm done? That's, you know, it's only time will tell. But right now I'm just enjoying every day and living in the moment because that was something that I didn't do for so long. And I've really been, life has just changed since I started living that way and just really enjoying each day. I am an affirmation, motto, mantra junkie. I really like them. And so I'm always curious to know what are the personal mottos, affirmations, or mantras that people hold dear to them to help them continue on, to help them persevere, to help motivate them, to help them stay rooted and grounded. So I asked Paige to share a motto that she lives by. And this is what she said. I have so many that I live by, but the one that probably pops up in my head right now is what is for me will never miss me. And I think that's something that I've just had to learn over the last few years that everything like, this is what I personally feel like everything has already been written. Everything that's supposed to happen in my life, it's already been written. So I just have to do my part, which is, you know, work as hard as I can, take some chances, not play it safe, and things will all fall into place. So if it's meant for me, it's going to happen. It can't miss me. So that's that keeps me motivated and encouraged. Just keep going. Thank you, Paige, for sharing your story. If you want to stay connected to Paige, you can via social media. You can absolutely follow me on my YouTube channel. You can just search my name, Paige Mariah, and then all of my social media, my Instagram, my Twitter, they're Paige Mariah as well, but it's Paige underscore Mariah on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you again, Paige. And for all of you that want to learn more about Paige, be sure to check out her show notes at www.flourishintheforeign.com dot com slash episodes slash page thank you again for listening to this episode i hope that you enjoyed it and if you did please consider becoming a supporter of the podcast you can do so via patreon buy me a coffee cash app or by purchasing a piece of production equipment via our amazon wish list you can find all the links to all the ways you can financially support the podcast at www flourishintheforeign.com slash support. Make sure you rate and review the podcast on Apple Podcasts or anywhere else you listen to this podcast. And while you're at it, be sure to head over to the website where you can get more information about getting, staying, and thriving abroad. You can learn more about each of the guests that have been on the podcast. You can see their pictures, you can read their bios, and you can stay in contact with them via their websites and their social media. Be sure to also check out the resources page on the website www.flourishintheforeign.com slash resources to check out some products and services that can help you get, stay, and thrive abroad. As you all know, I am a consultant and I do offer one-on-one calls. So if you have questions about moving abroad, you can book a consultation with me. If you have questions about building a business abroad, you can also book a consultation with me. And if you are really ready to launch your business abroad, 
and take it from idea to purpose-driven business and sales, or perhaps just scale your business to financially support yourself while you're abroad, definitely apply for my 12-week sprint program. And you can learn more at www.flourishintheforeign.com slash Christine. And that's where you can book in all of your consultations and get all of your questions answered. If you have not grabbed my free Build a Business Abroad guide, what are you doing? Go ahead to the website www.flourishintheforeign.com slash resources and grab that today. Hey, are you thinking about launching your own podcast or you want to increase your reach of your podcast or monetize your podcast? Well, I highly suggest joining the WOC Insiders membership. It's a membership that has really been helpful for me as I have grown Flourish in the Foreign. There is so many resources there to help you with engagement, marketing, legal, and everything else you need to have a successful podcast. Join WOC Insiders membership today and use my affiliate link, which you can find in the description of this episode on the website, www.flourishintheforeign.com slash resources. It's at no extra cost to you, but it is another way to support this here podcast. As always, thanks to Zachary Higgs, who produced the music for this podcast. He is an amazingly talented producer, so if you need music for any of your creative endeavors, he is your guy. You can find out all of his information in the show notes. Thank you all so much for supporting this podcast. Thank you so much for believing in the voices and stories of Black women. Please take care of yourselves today and every day. And please remember that it's not about getting abroad. It's not about being abroad. It's about thriving abroad. So go abroad and cultivate a life well lived. See you next time. Bye. On the next episode of Flourish in the Foreign. So before moving here, just like many of us do, we always go to Google and we put in black in said city. It's a cultural thing. It's a thing we do just so we can figure out hair products, makeup, things to do, where to go, whatever. So in my research, I found literally pages and pages of fetish sites no true information on anything in Hungary. So I yelled to my husband, I'm like, where are you taking me? And he was like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine.